my, bro, my my son was like, I don't know, but because Safari was his friend, <laughs> he got a pass, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. And yeah. the Seven Up definitely fuck that. He didn't want him, but we, you know, we you know, we're, 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 team, <laughs> we're team oriented. We, we team we right. teamed it, and it was, you know, still a positive. But, you know, you know and, and check this out. When we was working with Nikki, we were, as she, as she was an unknown. We was in the other studio, you know, working with Little Kim yeah, on her Kim, album. Yeah. Wow. Um, what yeah. is it, La Bella Mafia? Yeah, that was Bella Mafia. We, we, yeah, we, we uh, co-wrote and produced on that, too. Yeah, so yeah. we was working with uh, Kim. But but Nikki always respected the female rappers. I feel good you know? that we were on the, crust, on the crest of a lot of first things. Now, like, what, what, other artists? what other artists did well, you work with? Because, I mean, I mean you, you think about it, it's through all spectrums. From, yeah, yeah. I mean, from the beginning to Kim to Nikki, who, who else did y'all work with that well, people wouldn't know? Well, we had uh, Justin, know, say. Justin Timberlake and NSYNC. Yeah, NSYNC. Uh, yeah, uh, Britney Spears, LFO. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah Britney Spears, before she was signed. She oh, yeah, she crashed deal. in our Brooklyn basement for weeks, bringing out yeah. the, the voice Yo, she, and the essence of her. She had some curry chicken, peas and rice from the corner. She yeah. was like, what? Is this? <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. And we always made the joke and said, yeah. yeah, that's how she got that ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she got. That's what she got. I'm going to be honest with you. We got to yeah. revise history, man, because I'm trying to figure out why Full Force don't get mentioned with the greatest production. I know, world. man. I know. I know. You talk to the greatest producers, they will say us immediately. You like Nile Rodgers. I see you guys work with Nile Rodgers, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, Nile is one of the first guys that impacted my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say that because when I was in college, um, I literally stalked him. They were the hottest group in the world. Chic. And Chic. I stalked him. I found out where he lived. Damn I it. know he recorded. He would come out of Lincoln Tower Plaza. Uh, he would see our picture on his car. <laughs> before, before we there. were known. Yeah, He'd be at the know. studio doing... Um, and he was things. You couldn't get in. Right. But I always find a way in. And he's doing working with Sister, Sister Sledge, Sledge. And I'm over there. And he's like dance. He's just sort of glancing at me. And I'm like, you gotta go down, big nigga. How you again. doing? Right, yeah. right, right. Big nigga, and, follow me. And, <laughs> yeah, so I stalked him, and he did one thing that that changed uh, everything uh, to me. He, um, man. one day I got home from college, and my mom said, "Anthony, you got a call from somebody." I said, "Really? Somebody named Nile or Ryle or Ryle?" And I dropped my bag. I said, "What?" I said, "Mom, what did he say?" He said, um, "Miss George, tell your son that first of all." I really respect him for being forceful and everything. Right now, we're so busy, we don't have time to work with this group. It's a great name in full force, that's great. But tell him, don't stop what he's doing. And I just cried because Translation? I, I felt- you, you right. tell that nigga, no. leave me the fuck alone. Right, right, right. <laughs> but my, my interpretation was, my inter and he did it nicely. And he's, he's always been that way. But my interpretation is, he made a phone call, so he put his energy in my home, right, spoke right. to my matriarch. Right. So for me, success is preeminent. And that's I said, right. That's, and that's how I read it. And it so now we see doubt. each other now, and he said, "Damn, boy, well, I fucked up." <laughs> <You know? laughs> but we're good friends now. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. we both been, we're both cancer champions, and and a lot of the little things, man. So let's it's all good. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the Paul Anthony Foundation. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the Paul Anthony Foundation. Uh, the phrase I, I use is, uh, "The cancer survivor walks the earth, but the cancer champion conquers the world." And you know, I started the foundation to to build awareness uh, in terms of being proactive with our health, particularly our men, because we're the endangered species. So I coined a phrase: "Proactivation times integration equals eradication." You know, if we integrate all the things that are available to us, we can eradicate disease. And it was shocking because in 2006, when I, I I mean, when I saw the lump in my neck, I literally was squatting like 405, like 10, 15 reps. And I looked in it and I said, what is this? I didn't feel it. And my man said, Colin Bergan, he said, Paul, yo, you check that out. So I went in and I got an FNA, a fine needle aspiration. They drew us some fluid out of it. And it said, um, seemed to be consistent with mantle cell lymphoma. Mm. So I know what that was. I heard the word lymphoma. And then when I did a biopsy and you look up that, the two first words I saw was fatal and non-curable and Lou was there so the first thing that I said was wow and then about 30 seconds after that I said it just came I said I ain't changing shit and what I meant was my constitution my belief because I've always been an advocate of the mind body and spirit connection before that and that's how you know God gave his toughest battles to his toughest warriors because I was um, I said I'm 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 equipped for this you know, and um, it was it was mind blowing because I've inspired so many pro athletes mm -hmm. and entertainers over the years. So you know, it was it was it was a trip. You know, we went on me and my brother. We literally went on tour because I was in the third, going into the fourth stage. So we went to so many different hospitals, sacking, hacking, sacking, everyone. And then mm -hmm. one of the last places we went to was uh, Memorial Stone Kettering, 
And um, it wasn't just Lou. I was there. No, too. I said my brothers. Okay, he said brothers. I said brothers. All right. No, of course you were. Yeah, no, we all walked through fire Show together. My love light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never forget, man. When uh, when the doctor came out, and I'm gonna let you take it. When the doctor came out, he introduced himself mm-hmm. to us and he said, oh, "How you doing? My name is Dr. Hamlin, Dr. Paul Anthony Hamlin." Mm. And I was like, mm-hmm. "Another sign." I looked around the room and I said, "Thank you." And I said to him, "I said all my life I've been on Paul Anthony." I said, so I'm going to keep on betting on Paul Anthony. Mm-hmm. And that's the one of the main reasons why I chose Memorial Stone Kettering. And, and we got to give yeah. a shout out also to TV One's Unsung because they profiled yeah. us. Kathy Hughes, my uh, girl. They, they profiled us on, on that talking about Paul's scenario. After that Unsung episode finished, Paul's cancer had came back. Mm. And when Paul was really fighting for his life, he needed a but, bone marrow... No, I was going to say, during the first cancer, I would you'll see pictures of me training in my room. You know, right. anytime there was a... Uh, a new chemo cocktail I had to go through, I would prepare for it. Did some more reps, did some more training, did some more things. And, you know, you have to walk around like 12 laps around very slowly, you know, with the smog and everybody's walking slowly. Man, I had my headband, my gym gloves. I took that yellow smog tied around my neck like Superman and I'm rocking to my music. And they're saying, yo, you, you're supposed to do 12. Why are you doing 20 laps? I said, because I've never been ordinary. And I said, the person that does extra is what makes them extraordinary. That's right. So I just manipulate the situation and just mm-hmm. do more and go more and, and do more. And then when it came back, you know, that one, one of the first things the doctor did is tested both of my brothers right. to see who would be a match. I, I thought it was going to be me. Right. We, we right. Because me and we both work out. Yeah. It was Lou, right? Like, he had my 10 for 10 donor match. And what Probably. happened is that when Paul was fighting for his life, at the time, they said, okay, we gotta, we gotta do it. So Paul was telling the doctor, um, we're getting ready to do the bone marrow stem cell transplant. So Paul was telling the doctor, what should I do? Should I change my way of yeah, eating? Should funny. I train? And he told Paul, just be good to Lou. Be good to Lou. <laughs> so, so the bottom line is that what happens yeah. is that when so, I went in, because I had to be home <laughs> taking uh, nip, Nupogen, uh shots, right. you know, injection shots, twice a day for two weeks to harvest my stem cells to prepare for Paul. As Paul was in, the, uh, in his room just getting right. weaker and weaker with his immune system going mm-hmm. low. And mm-hmm. I remember before we had to do the transplant, Paul actually told me, and this is no lie, he says, yo, Lou, man, please, before... Please just don't get hit by a car and fuck right. everything don't up. Mess nothing up. <laughs> he told me that. Literally. I got things to do. Don't so mess so up. what happened is that the nurses told me <laughs> that, so listen, things could happen to you too. Like I could bleed inside and stuff could happen to me doing it. He said, mm-hmm. do you still want to do it? And I said, of course I do. I would die for my brothers. I would right. die for my family. We're all like that. And, yeah. and, and, and the thing about it is that they said, mm-hmm. your brother needs uh, six million stem cells to survive. If mm-hmm. we don't get enough, we're going to take a catheter to your chest and try to draw out as much as we can. Right. And um, what happened is that, you know, I did my thing. And to my surprise and all their surprise, instead of giving Paul six million stem cells, I was able to give him nine million stem yeah. cells yeah. to help save Just his like life. That. And here's yeah. the crazy thing with the whole stem cells thing. My mm-hmm. thing is that I'm dealing with a, a disease myself called retinitis mm-hmm. pigmentosa which leads to blindness. There's no cure right now. And, I, and I'm and i staying proactive because I'm following my brother Paul. Because even though when Paul was in the in the hospital fighting for his life and doing chemo, Paul would still be on the phones doing business. So I mm. take that incentive from Paul. He never like, I can't do it. He was still yeah, doing that, business, that, business as that, usual. That, that always amazed me. And I just stay that way. Yeah. So even though I say to myself, fuck man, I wish you had a stem cell for my fucking eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. But um, well, well, we all support one another. No, I was going to say with Paul, the thing that always impressed me with Paul because I'm very much like the three brothers were different in our personality. Lou was like very loving the world. Paul's like loving the loving but if I can't love you fuck it. I'm fuck it. You know so the <laughs> deal is I, I, I like I, I looked at Paul and I would just look at him from a distance and it's amazing to see somebody that is who they say they are. Paul would say things like this like oh man I have something that's supposed to happen I'd rather happen to me than y'all because I'm built for this. He would say stuff before things even happened. Right. And when it happened, I remember the doctor, one of the doctors in NYU said, you know, we'd probably give you three to four years to live. And Paul said, I think I could write a couple of his songs in three years. How do you say shit like that? You know, but he was always that positive mindset, doing chin-ups on the door. And I'm like looking at him like, damn. Even when the doctors tell him, don't do it, you know? No, but the mindset though, because it, it was amazing to see that you don't know who you are until adversity tests your ass for real. Mm-hmm. You right. really don't know. You can say, well, I'm the, the. You don't know shit right. until it happened. It was amazing to see that he is who he said he was. Right. You know? And Bo yeah. Lou, on your YouTube channel, you talked about 
the eye condition. What is that? How do you? What is, how did that even start? Man, it's yeah. like one. It's like one of those. It's like one of those rare things. It's a. Uh, it's just one of those diseases, like tunnel vision, right? Like right now, I have no peripheral vision that way or up way. I bumped into so much shit and yeah. bumped into things and knocked down little kids because I don't look down. So what it does is like one of these things. So the thing about it is you just got to stay proactive. I got to give a shout out to uh, Dr. Bass who who um, had found out what I had and then Dr. Uh, Rosenfarb as well who does uh, alternative medicine. So I just don't stick with the medical medicine because medical, they don't really give you a keep hope alive speech. Dr. Rosenfarb gives that keep hope alive speech mm -hmm. because it's not just about the disease in the eyes is also about stuff around you. You got to eat right mm -hmm. and stress. He says, Lou, just mm -hmm. try not to stress a lot mm -hmm. because stress really fucks up a lot of things that you're going oh, through. Absolutely. So I'm just staying positive and proactive and because um, yeah. I, I want to see forever, you know? And then, so now basically, 